Hi guys. The intention of this video is just to provide a quick insight into some of the methods I use whilst I'm composing and some of the main libraries that I use day in, day out. To demonstrate this, I thought I'd recreate one of my all-time favourite soundtracks. Uh, it's from the film Backdraft. It's obviously a Hans Zimmer score. Um, I absolutely adore this soundtrack. In my opinion, it's some of his best work. I absolutely love it. Um, I was fiddling around with the chord sequence last weekend and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make this into a full track, which I ended up doing, which I'm now going to demonstrate uh, and show you how I've put it together and what sample libraries I've used and give you a few tips as to how I've achieved the sound. Um, like I say, I've loved this cue from, from when I was younger. Yeah, that's actually what got me into film music. So the reason I've done a remake as opposed to an original, one of my original tracks, so that you can compare it to the original the original score uh, so you can get an insight as to how it, how you can create modern day Hollywood style soundtracks with tools that are readily available you can do a direct comparison between my version and the original and see what you think um, so yeah let's get let's give it a go it's the it's the end sequence the finale the, the warehouse scene um, so I'll run it I'll run it through and uh see what you think. So there we have it. Now, there were two versions available to the public for um, of the backdraft, backdraft score. Well, one that was available to the public, another one that was kind of a something that someone pulled from somewhere. I'm not entirely sure, but the um, the original soundtrack that was available to the public was uh, was remixed and remastered by George Martin. Um, and obviously, then there's the original score that was in the film um, with some sound effects that are still on there and that. Now I've tried to do a bit of a combination between the two. Um, the percussion was a bit different, and the synths were the synths were kind of scaled a bit back in the public release. So you, you'll be able to find both online. But um, but yeah, just to put it out there. So yeah, I mean I I, I use Vienna Ensemble. Um, I have a couple of slave rigs that I use for this particular project. I'm not not doing that it's just all everything's hosted in my in my host um so yeah I, I don't tend to use a fixed template as such um i have several banks of um contact loaded in which are all empty and then i have everything rooted back to the door uh, so i can add all the effects um, through through the door. I'm not using effects effects channels or anything like that. I'm doing everything. I've got a separate channel for every single instance and every imp every instrument within contact. So just to show you what I mean, uh, let's pull this up. So yeah, in the outputs in contact, I have everything rooted back to the door. So as you can see here, all the outputs then correspond. To the relevant channels in here so this way because I, I, I tend to use many different 
different settings on on the on the reverbs, on the delays, uh, you know, and, and on the compressors and if I, I change it, I change everything. So I don't I don't use the effects channels, but I do I do in some I have quite a few templates set up, uh, but in this particular one everything's empty, uh, and like I say, it's all done on my host rig. My other two slaves, one that's got eight gig of RAM, another one that's got thirty two. They're you know there for when I, I've got particular big projects that I'm working on, um, but for this one. I've managed to do everything, you know, inside my main door. So, to have a quick run through, I mean, just to, to be honest, I'll give you just a quick, a quick look at how to do that with Vienna Ensemble. So, if you look here, oh look, where are we? There. So, obviously, I've just shown you here the outputs, which are all corresponding directly. To outputs within Cubase, and then all of them then route through to group tracks, which I have set here. So strings, brass, woodwinds, choirs, percussion, synths, guitars, and if there's anything else that's any other random things that, I've, that are going there, I can also add additional group tracks. And in my arrangement window, I usually tend to start like I say, with numerous banks of contact. Now these are, are relatively empty because I've dragged these instruments into the relevant groups in our final arrangement here. So you'll notice all these are a bit out of sync. That's because I'm just dragging them, irrelevant of the, the MIDI channel that they're on, into the relevant sections, strings, brass, winds, percussion, synths, so on. So that that's kind of it, it's kind of clean up at the end of the project. I'll I'll go through everything. I'll have all the separate instruments running in each version, each edition of Contact, and then once I'm done at the end, I'll drag all them tracks then back into the final arrangement here. So I've got everything nice and organised at mixing stage. So that's Contact. Um, also, I, I do use quite a few synths, which can be found. Here, I've got Zebra running at the moment. Um, yeah, that's you know it's self-explanatory that everything's just rooted back to back to Cubase. Here we are. There. Everything's rooted back to Cubase directly from both instances of Viano Ensemble, which I'm currently running. Obviously, when I'm when I'm when I'm hosting. When the slaves are online as well, um, all them outputs are still routing back to Cubase. I don't tend to do much mixing in Vienna Ensemble, um, although again I do have a template that, where I do do mixing <laughs> within Vienna, Vienna Ensemble. But it all depends on what the pro what the project is and what's you know what's entailed. So, to have a quick run through some of the main libraries I predominantly use, and that's why I say I've done this. I've, I've decided to use this this particular cue because. It emphasizes quite a lot of what I predominantly use. And I've got a hell of a lot of light sample libraries, but these are the ones that I'll, I'll, I'll mainly mainly use. So, uh, let's have a look. If there's anything that you're not too sure of, if I've gone skips over through, through anything too quick, don't hesitate to ask a question and I'll, I'll, um, I'll answer it as best I can. Um, so, right, yeah, so the choir's... Let's pull this back. So the choirs. I think for this. Yeah. Lacrimosa sustains. This is a fantastic library. 8DIO. Or, or V8P, should I say. This is it's the, the bespoke range. Um, this library is just massive. Perfect, perfect for this. I mean, beautiful. 
beautiful. So yeah, that's the choirs. Strings, I mean, I, I, do, I use that library a hell of a lot now. Um, use quite a lot, I, use, I like to use the choirs in Metropolis Arc as well, that's in volume one, that's a fantastic, fantastic choir library. Um, so strings, now, what I tend to do a lot with the strings, uh, especially the staccatos and spiccatos, I always stack them with um, multiple libraries. So, for instance, here now I have Cinematic Strings 2. Um, get back to, so you can view this window. Right, so yes, Cinematic Strings 2. So... Stacked with Cinematic Studio Strings. Stacked with Furia Staccato Strings, which is a small library from Impact Soundworks, which allows you to stack up the ensemble with as many players as you'd like, which is a great feature. It's actually only $29. Um, or it's, you can get it for free if you spend over $59 on anything in the shop. So I highly recommend that library for, for the staccatos and, and that it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, so like I say, I've stacked them three, them, them three libraries together to achieve that good thick. It's a nice, nice thick sound. So, um, sustains. Now, as you, as you know from my previous video, Albion 1. Absolutely adore this library. Um, very versatile, very flexible. It's, it features in pretty much everything I do nowadays. Very lush tone. Use with the violins here. Yeah, so cinematic studio strings again, just the violins this time. The cinematic strings, the cinematic studio strings, Albion, and Metropolis Arc tend to be my my main go-to libraries nowadays. Like I say, I have a hell of a lot. I have most of them out there, and and the these are the ones that I'm that I'm going to the most. I don't want to go through every th every single instrument as you know, like I did in the previous in the previous video. I'm just it's just basically an insight to what I'm using on a day to day basis. So brass wise, quite a, quite a lot of brass going on here. So yeah, so. Um, So yeah, um, what have I got going on? AD, yeah, ADIO, um, not ADO, Majestica. That's another one I didn't mention. Some fantastic brass in there. Both the shorts and the sustains. Love it. time like I said before I'm using just basic reverbs but I tend, I tend to a lot of the time use different settings <coughs> excuse me different settings uh, depending on what what the instrument is which is why I'm not using effects sends I'm just doing it all so I like I like having I like having everything independent completely independent uh, Apologise if I'm not in the right windows as well when I'm trying to talk to you about this. It's just confusing trying to keep switching back and knowing what I'm actually looking at and what what's actually being recorded. So like, like I said, I'm not going to go through each patch. But Metropolis Arc. ADO, Majestica. And again. Again, 
I'll be in one. Very nice sounding brass. Uh, winds on this particular track I've used Albion 1 again. Now, percussion is on a separate instance of contact. So now, on here, as, as you know, you're seeing a lot of um, quite a lot of percussion going on here, as you can see. You're seeing a lot of hands in the percussion. We're seeing a lot of ADO, epic toms, um, drums of war, and cinder samples. Now, another th another big, you know, up and coming player in the game of uh, libraries, sample libraries is audio is um, audio imperia. Now these guys provide some fantastic libraries. Some really nice, you know, some really nice libraries that can cater for all sorts. So you can hear that thick, compressed. That's a, that's a trailer hit. That's on there. I think this is actually on the free. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so the freebie sounds that you, they supply. But I highly recommend you check the, these guys out because the, some of the sounds that you can get from from their stuff is is really good, and they've got really nice UIs as well. You know. Very easy to navigate around. You know, it's just it's just just great. Um so yeah, we what else have we got here? Even got some majestic percussion in there. Some Metropolis Arc percussion. Sound iron. No, the symbology. I think that's this bit. Jesticker again. Some more from Audio Imperia. There they are. Now they've re <coughs> redone their, all the epic Tycho, epic Toms, epic Doll, epic Frame Drum. Um, which I think I'm actually using. Yeah, I'm actually using here. There's also here to mention Colossal Toms. Aria sounds. Now these guys are also providing some pretty, pretty good libraries. Um, they do a string library as well, which is which is pretty good. So yeah, that's it on the contact front. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go in, into depth. If anyone wants to know anything more about what I'm doing here, then don't hesitate to drop me a, drop me um, a question in the comment comment section. And I apologise if I've gone through anything too fast. If there's anything you want me to pinpoint more, I'll come back to. Just let me know, and I can do a separate video on that or or whatever. No synths, like I mentioned before. So all them are, all them are running in the in the sixty four bit edition of um, the Anion Pro Ensemble server, so that I can load more samples into into each version of Contact. You have like a three gig a three gig limit when you're doing it, and it'll fall over. So, but now on the thirty two bit edition. Here now, um, the 32-bit version. I'm running Zebra twice um, for the pulse and the pad. Now this is again one of the things I mentioned before. The different versions that were uh, that have been released of this of the soundtrack. One where there is the pulse in the background, and one where there's not. Like I say, some the George Martin remastered edition. Doesn't have as many of the synths incorporated in, although they are there subtly. But in the actual the actual soundtrack that was used on the film, they, they were a lot more prominent, and um, you can hear that in the in the in, in that edition, which I love. I mean that that the eighties nineties style synths, you know, that were used, loved it. Speaking of which, I mean this. I mean that's that's layered in, like I say, well, layering. I I do I, I layer all the time. Get the the sounds nice and beefy. So that la that's layered with two of the big brass libraries. See here. I mute the synth.
I pan slightly left and right. Just to fill it out a little bit. But yeah, when I layer them three together. A nice fat sound with the high end in there as well. It cuts through. It just cuts through the mix nicely. Now what I actually used for that was an interesting library I found. Let me try and find it. Where are we? Which I'm finding myself again using a lot now. <laughs> Here we are. So these are from a library um, from Bitly Sounds and Refills. And it's a, basically a Fairlight CMI emulation. And then the Fairlights, which were the big, one of the first digital synths, which were used in the, I think the late 70s, early 80s. Um, with a big, big monitor on the side with a massive keyboard. This is basically an, em an emulation of that. And you get plenty. You can, there's several packs you can buy within it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and I'm finding myself using them all the time. If, I'm to, if I was just a solo, and this, I mean, this patch chariots of fire. Um, that's the sound alone. Like I just described it, when coupled with the the brass, it sounds nice and nice and fat. Um, but I'm also using this patch, which is called Analog Truth. Yeah, which. Oh, hold on, sorry about that. Uh, which, yeah, is running underneath Zebra. See how it fills it out a little bit. Again, one's pan slightly left, one's pan slightly right. So they both complement each other. And then when you add the pulse, it's also in Zebra. Just makes it all fit together nicely. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, leave, feel free to leave a comment. Please subscribe. Um, I should have quite a few new releases coming in the new year. I've been very quiet this year for for several reasons, which I'm not going to go into. But, um, but yeah, um, just subscribe, and uh, I'll see you soon.